Hello and welcome to Release Date Rewind. My name is Mark J. Parker and I am a film lover, filmmaker, film celebrator. And normally this is an audio podcast wherever you get your podcasts on your favorite apps. But thanks to Portland Media Center, you are about to watch the video component of this show where I celebrate movie anniversaries with my friends. Each month, I usually talk about two different movies that I love with different friends. And we talk about the making of the movies, trivia, any fun memories associated with them. So I hope you enjoy because now it's time to rewind. Yeah, because that's and the they thing. were so young, so Sam young. Remy, Sam Sam Remy, 20. 20. 20. I yes. know. I was like, wow. And they're the same. So Bruce Campbell had to be no older than twenty. He was twenty-one. Yeah. He was so cute. You could yeah, see. Yeah, because I did the math. He's he was uh, forty years ago. Like this time, he was. Uh, 24 so yeah once the you know the movie came out really in 81 and then making it so yeah he was only like around 21 and it's funny because yeah. he seems older but i say that about everyone like well the moccasins old movies, and yeah. he was kind of dressed like old man like right and, and also you know, everyone just carried themselves differently in i feel the like 80s, you know like old times yeah, yeah. he like, carries himself in general bruce campbell ch- carries yes. himself like a much older movie star because yes. those mm-hmm. are the people that he idolized so he's mm-hmm. more like kind of like a jimmy stewart or you know yeah. like yeah. very old timey yeah in his just general demeanor i think great that's, 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 that's a another point. great point yeah because yeah. you're right we where we really came of age like youth was like so important we had these casts of you know the wb we had these movies titanic like kitty and i talked about i mean like the stars were like early 20s so that's so interesting when he was younger the stars were like older people right yeah they were these these like macho men and these these like famous women these movie star adults whereas we got more the the teen craze was like so popular for us so yeah that's interesting wow this is like therapy. I think I just unlocked something. Okay. <laughs> Good to know. Um, anyway, okay. So now let me tell you a little bit more about them. So obviously, yeah, they had been friends. They were making shorts, lots of shorts together. I looked on their IMDb. Sam Raimi made a few shorts, but Bruce Campbell was making a ton of little shorts and student films and all this stuff. So how perfect. They find each other. They make this movie. Um, producer Robert G. Tappert also made this film with them. They had all produced the short film Within the Woods in 1978. Yeah. Have you guys seen it? Is it online? No. Oh, and now, now I, I wonder if you could find it. I don't yeah. know. Right? I didn't have time to look because I thought I kept reading about it and I was like, ooh, I'd like to see it because yeah. Bruce Campbell and um, uh, what's it, Cheryl. Um, uh, oh, yes. Yeah. Yeah, yes, um, she's we're in, both it too. in it. Yeah, yeah, he plays like the monster, or the the deadite, and she's... there's a whole chapter yeah. in If Chins Could Kill about yes. it. And so that's I'm like, oh my god, I have to find this. So probably after we wrap, I'm gonna look and see if I can find it somewhere. Yes. Oh, oh yes, archive and, has it because archive has yeah, so much. archive that archive.org, right? They are a great site. They have so in. much. Yes, but Jackie, mm-hmm. uh, since uh, obviously people who are listening can't see it, but people who are watching, why don't you hold up your book? Tell us about the Chins book. What is it called? If these, I love it. If, if Chins, chins could, could kill, I am a Bruce Campbell fan girl. I met him at a convention, and he he signed my book. I love um, it. Can you show us his signature, his autograph? Yeah. Where is it? it was he cool? Is... Was he so nice? Oh my God, he called me sweetheart. I like, I, <laughs> I was completely... so jealous. I was like, you bitch. <laughs> oh, that's an autograph, baby. And he was like, he's like, all right, sweetheart. It was great to meet you. And then he talks to Chris and then he's like, all right, get out of here, you son of a bitch. <laughs> wow. Wow. He's like, he, he Chris was like, I made it. I made it. <laughs> that's a, where did you now? Which convention did you go to to see him? Uh, N- NYCC. So he was there. Oh, cool. um, he had a panel and he's just so I think that, you know, people really there's this misconception between the characters that he plays and the person that mm. he is it's always the because, case, yeah. yeah, you know, he's not the himbo that he usually portrays. Mm. He's actually very intelligent very very good at crowd work and so it was like listening to his experiences it just sounded like he had so much fun yeah um even through all the torture that yeah <laughs> i don't know about making the film was a lot of fun but I'm yeah sure it's a great 
story. He had more him. fun doing Xena, to be fair, than doing like. Uh, that's like what I this. fell in love with him. As, oh yeah, my god, I forgot Zena. he was in Xena. I Can had an just... action figure of him. For did a you while. really, Katie? I, did. Oh I had my all god. the Xena action figures, including him. We oh talked about gosh. this. Like, yeah. I oh, Katie, sister. I love that. I was like, this is my target actor. So that's that's how you met him. That's your your in to Bruce Campbell was through Xena, right, Katie? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And you two, yeah. And Hercules as well. He was also. Oh yeah. God, I love those shows. They were right. They don't good. make them like they used to. No. Rob and, Tapper is married yeah. to Lucy, Lucy Lawless, which is oh. ironic. Lucy Lawless thought Evil Dead was appalling. Like she hated it. She's like, these are horrible people that made this movie. And then she ends up marrying one of the producers. Oh my and, god. That's and is perfect. in Evil Dead, um, the Ash vs. Evil Dead. She's show. in the show. Yes, yes. right. I do know that. Yeah, and she's phenomenal. Wow. I love her. Oh, I didn't realize. Oh my God, I didn't realize that connection. That's so awesome. Look at this great little funky small world of fantasy horror. I I love it. Okay. But so, yes, so they, in 78, they made this short film within the woods and they use that as their proof of concept, right? Which is a thing many indie filmmakers still do today. And that built, slowly built interest from investors and they secured some money and then more money. And like we said, then they finally get the money to make The Evil Dead a few years later, right? Stephen King absolutely helped this movie get some attention. That then got Fangoria Magazine's attention. So they started writing about it. And then that's what then helped New Line Cinema look at it seriously. And I thought this was interesting. Did you guys see that? It's funny because they do this every once in a while nowadays, but it's like, the film industry like kind of hates it. New Line did something totally new, totally rare back then. They released the movie in theaters and on VHS. I thought that yeah. was interesting. They did yeah. that in the UK that? as well and in yeah. Germany. They did it in a couple different countries. Yeah. They did the release to video and theaters at the same time. And then it got banned yeah. in like UK and Germany. And it was Germany, like, definitely. Yeah. Germany, no. They just got it back 2016. They're like, fine. Yes. So wow. Fine. Yeah, I, yeah, I read Germany that it's still banned not, like, in some that. places. <laughs> Wow. Turkey, I think banned you would in think, Hungary. You would think Germans could handle it. I mean, like, what's, you know, like. Germany's got a lot of nerve. I'm like, Germany, yeah. take a seat. Take a seat. Right. Right. Take several seats. Ganda. Ganda. Shut it off. Ganda. I'll start with you, Katie. When did you first see this movie? Do you remember, like, how old you were? Where were you? So, it's weird. So, I saw army of darkness first mm. i remember Same. seeing army of darkness first because my parents really liked it and i remember watching that my mom be like this is really weird but then with, like when he like splits into like my mom's like what the fuck are we watching and then like <laughs> and then it went on she's like oh this is actually pretty great like she realized you know but um yeah. so i didn't see the first two for years and it's okay. it had been a long time since i'd seen upon this rewatch i was like oh i forgot a lot about you know it's been years and years i don't remember i think it might have been like on TV or something because mm. they always they usually played Army of Darkness on TV like yes. that was their go to yeah. I remember sci-fi and stuff Evil yeah. Dead two sometimes Evil Dead the first one very rare mm. so I have maybe only seen Evil Dead the first one maybe once or twice max mm. Evil okay. Dead two I'd seen a couple times and Army of Darkness a bunch yeah so, how funny yeah. okay because I remember Army of Darkness was a thing that came out yeah. I want to say in ninety two I think. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that just had its 30th well, no, last remember, year. No, remember this was 92 or 93. Because remember 90... Wide Release? Oh, yes. And then I said, I think it's the 30th of Wide Release for Army of Darkness. Oh, oh wow. there you go. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, there you go. But I remember Wait, that was on TV a lot. You're right, Katie. And I remember I being intrigued. I know that's kind of the... Would you say that... Because I still haven't seen it. Um, would you say that's like the funniest of oh, the three? Yeah. It's my favorite. Yeah. It's it gets the most zany. It fully hits the stride that they were going for. And okay. I, it's funny because people that watch Army of Darkness and Ash vs. Evil Dead, if you watch the first one, are shocked by how serious it is. It mm -hmm. is a serious horror movie. There's no comedy. There's no... Right. Ash is not groovy. Like, he's not there yet. Oh, yeah. he he's is, not there yet. Yeah. He's not... He's, he's not... Yeah, baby groovy. Ash. Right. He's not exactly... Um, baby so, Ash, yeah. that's funny. Yeah, <laughs> he was baby Ash. He wasn't ready yet. You know, they, no. they and that's hint at that's the what like yes, the they, first one. they he does have that chainsaw moment. Yeah, which they mm -hmm. at least hinted at, like maybe what was to come if they yeah. ever were but lucky the enough to thing continue. Is they had no, they had no plans for sequels. They did oh. not plan to make a sequel. They okay. sold the rights. Um, to that's why they had to kind of redo the beginning. Exactly. And the second one, because I was watching the second, and I was like. Oh, what the fuck? I don't remember. Because again, it had been years. And then I read, I'm like, that makes sense. They sold the rights. They could not use scenes from the first to do the second. So they had to redo. Oh. And that's been a constant throughout the entire series, even throughout yeah. 
Army of Darkness, different production yes. company. Wow. The rights are tied up. Yeah. They couldn't have access to Army of Darkness for Asher's The Evil Dead, so they could only reference the first two movies for the first season. So it's oh. it's a but constant they, theme. But the, set, the third season just had scenes from Army of Darkness. Yes. Oh, and no. so Yes. Oh, no, yes, no, they no, did. Evil Dead 2. Oh, it did? Okay. No, it had, once they got to season two, they were able to yeah, evil, incorporate okay. it. And so that's why okay. we got the storylines that we did. But, yeah. you know, it's just... It's so it, weird with the different It's so production. interesting yeah. to see yeah. how that was a constant theme. But they yeah, had no because... plans for a sequel, so I love that they went back to the chainsaw. Because you would think, yes. oh, the chainsaw, they're building up. They were like, oh, just put the chainsaw. It's pretty cool. How like, funny. They had sort no of plan. accidental, yeah. 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 Not really. So yeah, they that's really interesting, interesting. because, yeah, I did see online that New Line, of course, so they released the first one, but then I saw they didn't release another one until i guess this new film evil dead rise is new line i guess mm -hmm. i guess other oh, studios okay. yeah so that would explain again like how rights were jumping around and yeah that gets so complicated for a franchise mm -hmm. wow it does geez that's like the it, halloween franchise the, how it mm -hmm. bounced around and you couldn't reference certain things and yeah mm -hmm. interesting okay um so yeah i remember it was on tv a lot but then i remember learning at a young age like oh this is a sequel oh well i'll have Same. to Right. I'll have to yeah. watch it in order because I was never really to this day. I'm not really one to watch things out of order, you know, but I love yeah. that, Katie. You just were like, I'm just going to start with Army of Darkness. Army, I feel like Army of Darkness, you could watch on its own. And yeah, and get it, it totally and stands, it on, its own. It, yeah, it stands you can, on its yeah. own. Even Evil Dead, too, you can because they do explain the beginning. Right. Right. How about you, Jackie? When did you first see Evil Dead? How did you find it? Tell me. So it was similar to Katie. I watched Army of Darkness in Mark Howard's basement. I'm pretty sure he... <laughs> um, yeah, no, we, I think, rented it from the Suncoast on Main Street. And... Um, Ooh, Suncoast. Oh, I loved... Yes, Represent. that was such a great video. Well, I, I loved so much in there. Their cardboard cutouts. I was like... They had yeah. the best selection. They had, they like... Uh, just movies that you typically wouldn't yes. get in like a blockbuster. They yeah, had true. Legend with uh, Tim oh, Curry. Love Legend. Yeah, Tom Cruise. Um, oh. mm -hmm. Yeah, no, that was okay. like, love that movie. But um, between that and then Cemetery Man with Rupert <gasps> Everett. I love Cemetery Man and yes. Rupert was very attractive. Take like I remember yeah. like seeing that younger me like, whoa, the guy from My Best Friend's Wedding is like smoking yeah. hot. Well, and then. Yeah. Again, it was a like all of that really kind of like schlocky comedic yes. horror. I feel like that's what he was into. So, you know, anytime we'd all get together, that's you know, so that's funny. what we'd be watching. So I watched Army of Darkness first. I completely okay. fell in love with it. Right. Um, so good. Uh, well, I mean, too, like, that's the one where Bruce is the hottest. Let's let's be honest. Okay. Yeah. Like, mm -hmm. Peacock. Cool. I was in high school. Yeah. Like, he had the long hair, you know, it's yeah. just, yeah. So, I mean, it was the perfect storm. So, um, I saw that. And then in college, I Rob Zombie had a show mm -hmm. on Turner Classic Movies. Oh, and yeah. And it was like the remember, midnight movies. Yes. And I loved it. I saw Poltergeist yeah. for the first time, Uncut. Oh, wow, in college. Oh, yeah. wow. <gasps> uh, uncut. So, Ooh. like, um, okay. Again, I dipped my toe into the horror waters like so much later. Like you wow. got me started with Scream. Oh my god. And gosh. then it was like baby steps, baby steps, final mm -hmm. destination. Oh, the mummy. Yes. Oh, the mummy, Katie. The mummy. Mm -hmm. Jackie and the mummy. <laughs> I love it. You That's wrote one of my biggest memory of Jackie my, yes. about the mummy movies. This actually this movie has so much in common. This series has so much in common with the mummy. I'm not surprised I got into it. Because oh. if you think about it. Book of the Dead, you open the book, you're not supposed to read the book. And, you know, ancient Egyptian mythology, Middle Eastern mythology, it's just different flavors of the same thing. You got a himbo with a gun. That's true. You know, it's just different flavors a, of the a same dumb, thing. A dumb white guy reads from the book. Yes. <laughs> Yeah, so Rob Zombie had that show, and that's where I saw Evil Dead. That he would show things like like cult films, mm -hmm. I'd, I'd Faster Pussycat Kill Kill, I'd wow. Poltergeist was on there, and that's how I saw Evil Dead for the first time. Wow. And I had already been into, like, I'd already seen Evil Dead 2, I'd already seen okay. Army of Darkness. And so it did kind of, I agree with what you said, Katie, it took me by surprise where I was like, oh, wow, this is so serious. But you, like... I feel like it's a foundation. So yeah, it's a foundation to the entire series. You're doing yourself a disservice if you don't watch it. It yeah. lays the foundation for all the mythology. Wow, interesting. And you know, think about it. So the, the first one is the most serious. Of course, it's schlocky and there's a, a, a couple little 
funny moments. But yeah, like you guys are saying, it's serious. But then think of where horror was. So at that time, yeah, with Friday the 13th, with Halloween, the horror was pretty serious for the most part at that era. But then as you, because I believe Evil Dead 2 came out in 87, mm -hmm. that was already now, Freddy was king and like he was kind of funny, right? It's and prime then, time, bitch. Right, absolutely. <laughs> that was 87 was, was Nightmare 3. And that's when he really became, I mean, I love Nightmare 3. We were just talking about that in my last it's episode. It's easily... Is that your favorite? It's my favorite. Yeah, yeah. Dream, I love Dream it. Warriors. I love Dream Warriors. I love one, three, and seven. New Nightmare. Those yes, are my top. I love New Nightmare, and I feel like I, New Nightmare gets slack. And you and I, I always know. loved it. I oh yeah, I remember Nightmare. watching that in Florida at your house, Katie. I remember uh, oh, yes. watching it's New so Nightmare meta. and The Cell. We like were watching like old old scary movies at that time. Um, but yeah, I love those three. But yeah, you're right. New Nightmare, or I'm sorry, Nightmare three eighty seven, Evil Dead two eighty seven, Chucky was in eighty eight. So like horror that was kind of like entering peak level of like still total gross horror but like comedy it was super fun so that would make sense and then by you know early 90s when army of darkness came out you know then we have yeah the cemetery mans we have like brain dead we have some carpenter stuff where like yeah horror comedy was kind of like and like funky horror comedy like not like horror comedy nowadays where it's like jokes and then murder it was like weird horror comedy yeah. at that time like you know wacky zany it wacky was zany. like the well, beetlejuice yeah. kind of like mentality yes. and everything right you needed to have a physicality about you to carry off what you were trying to put mm. on screen yeah. i feel like a lot of these particularly with like something like evil dead 2 or army of darkness or any like um even like the child's play movies there mm -hmm. has to be a certain level of physicality that you have to be able to carry it off or it doesn't work that's a good point mm -hmm. yeah mm -hmm. well said i love that you know because army of darkness came out right around the time leprechaun which i've talked about in the yeah show. Leprechaun. Total I was thinking of. goofy uh, which leprechaun is absolutely inspired by this movie with the low running angles you know and dutch and angle that, baby yes that, oh yeah it's so good. that's a good and, like, point and that <laughs> leprechaun's fingers get you know slammed in the door like actually leprechaun i forgot is so uh inspired by this movie totally I'll tell you real quick about how I started discovering this movie. So I, I had always heard about it, I feel like, but I didn't know, I didn't even really understand what it was until sort of Donnie Darko, because one of my all-time faves that I've covered on the show, that. in Donnie Darko, Jake Gyllenhaal and Jenna Malone are at the movie theater watching Evil, Evil Dead. Dead with the yes. porch swing. The porch swing. And I remember thinking, It what wasn't until later when I realized what I knew it from. Yes. Because That's I remember so in the funny. movie. I totally forgot about that. Yeah. It's, they're, they're showing it at the theater. They walk into the theater and it even, the camera pans up and it says The Evil Dead. And I was like, oh yeah, that movie. I don't know it, but I heard it's great. And then, yeah, we see the car coming up, that porch swing, which is like, that like just rhythmic banging, right? And I remember watching Donnie Darko and being like, what the, is this Evil Dead? What the hell is this movie? It's just this porch banging. And then the porch swing banging. And then they even show a shot of Cheryl um, like looking and that's at the moment when she's drawing and the clock, mm -hmm. you know? So it's so funny now to have seen the movie a few times and know like, cause back during Donnie Darko, I had never seen it. So I'm like, that movie looks weird. And I remember in Donnie Darko, I think the screen, there's like the portal thing with the rabbit, you know? And so I'm like, well, wait, is that what the Evil Dead looks like? Or is that now Donnie Darko's effects? Like I couldn't tell where Evil Dead was ending and now where Donnie Darko is, you know, continuing. Mm -hmm. But so that's when I first kind of started seeing clips. And then I actually think I didn't really see the movie in full until 10 years ago. So even later after you guys probably, 10 years ago to get excited for the Evil Dead remake 2013. Mm -hmm. So that's when I jumped into the first Evil Dead. Although, let me tell you, going back to Kate Sheehan, she and her friend Matt and I, sophomore year of college when I was living in New York, I just moved to New York, the Evil Dead musical was playing off Broadway. I, I am heard going about this that. year. Oh, I am going oh, good. this year. I, is it good? I can't oh, wait. Oh my God, I loved it. And again, I didn't really know a lot of it. I just knew like, oh yeah, I've seen clips. Like I know it. And Evil Dead, the musical is basically act one is all of Evil Dead. Act two is all of Evil Dead 2. So then it gets really silly and the oh, chainsaw was, hand and okay, oh, you, you gotta it, check it like, out. Were you in the splatter so zone? I was not in the splatter zone. No, I we were, we took the cheap seats way in the back but oh my god and i'm so i'm actually so excited it's happening an hour uh, away from me in uh nashua new hampshire this summer 
So I got to, I was almost, honestly, guys, I was like, wait, can I, like, can I be in it? Like, let me look up the, like, audition stuff. I'm like, but it's an hour away. That's going to be a drive back and forth for rehearsal. So I won't be in it. I'm not going to audition, but I am totally going to go. Yeah, it's a fun musical. I'm very excited to check it out again because that was years ago. I, I can't remember everything, but it's fun. There's an animatronic I don't want to spoil it for Jackie. It's but like a moose. There's yeah. a moose head yeah. and like it's singing and it's a I musical. I did read something so, I mean, about a moose. You don't yeah, have to be Splatter Zone for I loved it. Musical. I saw it at the New World stages uh, on 50th Street. And I feel like, Katie, I might have taken you there to Blockheads maybe one time. Yeah, Mexican Blockheads. place. Yeah, mm-hmm. we went to Blockheads. So it was not far from the theater we saw Sweeney Todd in the Ziegfeld. So it was in the 50s. But um, mm-hmm. what are some scenes or moments or shots or lines? What do you love? I, uh, well, first of all, I love the demon point of view where it's going through the oh, yeah. uh, forest um, mm-hmm. and with the sound of that, oh, like it's like so jarring. Yeah. Um, I love, um, I love that. I just think it's so cool and creepy. And I love that we don't really see it ever in any of the movies. Like you're just this disembodied entity and you're like, is it a thing? Is it yeah. there? Is it like, you know, what is it? Uh, right. It's like the mis- like. It's always scariest. The unseen is always scariest. You know, you don't totally. see the monster. You just like see the point of view. I love that. Um, I love the camera angles. Um, and yeah, I love, I love uh, Cheryl in the cellar. Like I love that whole, and I love yes. her point of view with the, like her sounds, <laughs> just like watching her friend. Like, and they're just like, why are her eyes like that? I'm just like, I just, she's just yes. like, I, just I wrote that line down, that. Katie. I love when Shelly goes, but why are her I eyes know. like that? And we just see her hand, you know, in the chains. Yes, I. So, that's, so I, all the POV creepy. shots work really it. well, but Cheryl's yeah. POV under that door is like it's extra so cool. great. And it's just like, it's a low budget movie, but they make the most of like everything with like the camera angles and like the, of course the acting and the special effects. And, you know, mm-hmm. they make the most of like, you know, there's a, when they go in the cabin and it's like kind of smoky, like when they first oh, enter, yeah. that was one of the producers like smoking a cigarette because they didn't have the fog machine that day. So like, <laughs> just do that. Like they just really made it work, but it works. Like they, it's it works really like, I love that. Like you don't need a million dollars. Like they made yeah. it work. Um, but yeah, I love, I love that whole scene with Cheryl and like fucking Linda when she's like sitting Indian or uh, crisscross, can't say Indian style anymore, crisscross applesauce, yeah. just staring. And I'm like, that is scarier than any, like going out. Like, she's just like watching and laughing <laughs> and, the and, and, the laugh, yes. and then the two, she's and then there's Cheryl like, ah, and I'm just like, yes, Christ, cause they're not doing anything. It's scary when they're not doing anything. They're yes. Just, they're just, they're just waiting. waiting. Yes. Like, Jinx. Just, like, and yeah, what's the song the she meeting. sings? Because I know they sing it in the 2013 one. We're gonna oh, get you. Get you. Um, uh, uh, don't make a peep. Do, yeah, don't make a peep. Go to sleep. They just have, this look like they're just having a lot of fun too. I mean, they know they weren't, but they, they seemed like they were because it was a miserable yeah. shape. But I did read um, that yeah, those uh, contacts were rough. I read brutal. that. You guys probably saw this too. They could only put them in for 15 minutes at a time because yeah. it would just like ruin their eyes, right? It would take like 10 minutes to put in and oh, then they, they had to stop like four or five times. And it's basically guys, like so. putting a piece of glass. Over yeah. Essentially. Over yeah. I think Bruce Campbell described it as like Tupperware over here. Yes. Eyes. I saw that <laughs> too. So thick. Oh. So, you know, mad oh. props to them for dealing with that nonsense. But yeah. it looked great. It looked really cool. Um, but that's what I that's what I love about the movie. I just think it's something to and like kind of everything we talked about before of being yeah. a little different with like there's not like the sex, drugs, and alcohol thing they could have gone. It's like just yeah. It's like yeah. cool. They're like a, yeah. a more elevated group of college friends for sure. Yeah. 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 And of um, course Bruce Campbell. Hello. Oh, I know. He's he like is so greatest. great. And I do yeah. appreciate it's it's hard because we we especially you guys seeing the sequels first, you already knew that he survived this one, right? But I do appreciate how there's kind of like no lead for the beginning. You actually kind of think Cheryl is sort of the lead, you know, because mm-hmm. she's she's seeing things first. And I think she's going to be the final girl. Yeah. The final yes. girl. Yes. That, again, they did again, all that. Again, version of di- expectations. Absolutely. Exactly. No final yeah. girl, girls, final guy, but even ash was supposed to die at the end technically oh was he okay yeah i do love the ending i love that last shot yes such a good shot oh yeah if if there were no sequels i would assume oh ash gets it too no one makes it out alive you know yeah Mm -hmm. i love and i love how yeah like you you bring up like final boy scream guy and 
Um, that again, great POV shot, and it goes through the house, you know, through the back yeah. door, through the front door. Yeah. He it's turns like, around, <gasps> and he and he has the last scream, much like typically a girl would kind of have that last scream, you know. Mm -hmm. So that I I really do love that ending. What about you, Jackie? What are um some fun lines, scenes, shots? Tell me what else you love about this well, one. I really, I, I'm somebody that enjoys special effects, especially practical effects. Mm -hmm. So I thought that they did such a good job with what little they had. Although mm -hmm. if I saw more milk, I was like, I'm like, you know what, I'm done. <laughs> yeah. Like, I don't do, I don't do dairy. So gross. <laughs> yeah, no, ugh. And creamed corn. I'm like, I already just watched oh. a bunch of twin cakes. I'm done. I'm yeah. done with the cream corn. You're so right. And it's funny, you bring up a good, you just made me remember that in Alien in 79, iconic, right? A oh, lot of like spewing yes. of the white, like liquid. Yeah. All yeah. of that was rancid milk around Ian Holm. And then Ooh. Lance Henriksen had to do it again for yeah. Aliens. Ugh, oh, God. Uh, yes. I know. So gross. It's so gross, but it looks so good. It, it does. does. It, it works, you know? Um, and in this case, it just looks like demon bile or whatever shooting out of mouths and eyes and gross. out of like a stump i think it's i think it's shelly's stump once they cut off her hand it's just like spewing there's out a right. couple stumps oh yeah, yeah there's a lot of a lot of stump action yeah, yeah. Uh -huh. well you know and they use the milk and i know i thought yeah. the same thing jackie it was like so gross the sound but it was milk. like it was so uh, for the time having all those twitching body parts when they oh. murder shelly I, I mean that was oh. Uh, basically unheard of. Yes. You didn't do that in a movie. You know, you get like, you know, Kevin Bacon got the arrow to the yeah. throat and then there was a blood mm -hmm. geyser and that was it. This was like a prolonged, like, uh, I like, love that her shot. body parts were twitching. Yeah. It was really, okay. really well done. And the actress had to go through the floor and like just mm -hmm. put her head through the floor for the million. And Remy's known for like doing a ton of shots. Yeah. And setting that up. Imagine having the eight hours a day. You're just like, oh my god, you're right. Oh. <laughs> and each setup, Brutal. you're just like, yep. I'm just gonna have to stand here with my head through oh this hole. Oh my god, yeah. But yeah, no, the special effects really, really do it for me. Um, Absolutely. And there was that scene where he's dragging Linda out, mm -hmm. and she's yep. like laughing like like a munchkin from like yes. the munchkins do in the Wizard of Oz. And I'm like, this is genuinely terrifying. Oh yeah. Like, this is like, okay, because a lot of it you can kind of write off. You know, we've, but we talked about Saw too. you know, like mm -hmm. we've seen grosser, scarier, mm -hmm. but that really still has staying power. Like that was genuinely eerie. And I'm so glad you bring that up because I wrote that down in my notes. The way she is still so committed as like leaves are probably going up her butt. Yes. You know, he's dragging her, but she is looking maniacal and she's laughing. Really, really awesome job. I love that yeah. whole bit. Yes. Well, and I hate I hate the scene, but we're gonna have to bring it up anyway. About oh yeah, with Cheryl. Yes, let's um, talk about it. It latched onto her. I I really I hate that scene. Um, yeah. yeah. Tell me. It, so it, tell well, me actually, why. Rainey Rainey regrets that he. Oh, does he? Original the original script was her to get attacked, uh -huh. and then um the Rob pushing the legs of her. Is, yeah, is that... kind of was like you should go further. It should like we should really make it visceral and really make it. You know, so Rainey actually regrets it going that far. I kind of yeah. forgot it happened so I early. I kind of like tense up and I'm like, oh, God, I hate this part. Oh, I know. But yeah. she is, for what it is, uh, what I like about it is that Ellen Sandalwise is so good. She mm. is such a good actress and really, really sells the, you know, the trauma of it and mm -hmm. just how, you know, when she finally gets inside and they try to leave and the bridge has collapsed, like she's hysterical. Oh yeah. Like, mm -hmm. I, you know, I really, I was like, you know what? You're doing an amazing job. Keep it up. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Agreed. Thanks so much for watching. Next time, there's going to be a new movie that we'll talk about, so stay tuned. And please follow Release Date Rewind on Instagram for updates. Bye.